Hello, my name is Allison Carmen. Welcome to my podcast, 10 Minutes to Less Suffering. And the name of today's podcast is Just Because You Have Problems, It Doesn't Mean Life is Bad. And this came up for me a few weeks ago. I was speaking to a friend who was having a couple of problems. She owns a business and she had a lawsuit that she was suing someone who didn't pay her years ago. And it looked like she could lose the lawsuit. And at the same time, her lease was up for her business and the landlord was trying to raise the rent and she didn't know where she was going to go. At the same time, her and her children were feeling well, her boyfriend was doing well, and we were out having a drink, having a good time. But in her spirit, you could see that the lawsuit coming with her lease ending, it made her feel that her life was sinking, that things were going in the wrong direction. And the first thing I said to her is, Life doesn't work like that. One problem is not necessarily related to another one. Just because you have one problem in your life that's not going well, it doesn't mean that the other problem you have is not going to resolve and is not going to be okay. And I see this all the time. When people have a few things in their life that aren't going their way, they start to build up this perspective that life's not working out. And when you start to do that, it kind of snowballs. The resistance creates negativity and the negativity creates us to be stressed and worried so we don't feel well, we're tired, and then we're shutting down a little bit and we're not open to new experiences, we're not open to solving, we're not open to be creative. Yes, she might lose that lawsuit, but it doesn't mean she's not going to be able to negotiate with her landlord and it doesn't mean she's not going to find a new space and even if these two things don't work out perfectly, It doesn't mean her life is bad. Her kids are well. She has enough money in the bank. Life in many ways is working. So we have to be able to see our lives that way and not have this giving up mentality, this life is getting the best of me mentality because you don't like a couple of things that are happening. And again, we talk about this all the time. Expectations cause such disappointment. Of course, nobody wants to lose a lawsuit and nobody wants to get kicked out of the space they're working in. But how do we know ultimately what's best and how do we know how it's going to resolve? How do we know what we're supposed to learn, what we're not supposed to learn? And again, if we get overly resistant and overly negative, it's going to take over and we're going to miss all the beautiful things. And we're also going to miss the opportunities. And we're also going to miss creating the future in the moment that we're in. The first thing we can do is stop the belief that if we have many problems, life is going in the wrong direction. They're just problems. And we have to make sure that we don't attach each problem to the next so it snowballs. They're separate. Resolving one or not has nothing to do with resolving another. So that's the most important thing. Write your problems down and be really clear. I mean, sometimes problems are related, but be really clear. Like my friend, her lawsuit and her lease have nothing to do with each other. So after you separate them out, automatically you're going to start to feel better because you're not going to feel like life's heading in the wrong direction. It's just, I have these different problems and I have to tell you, everybody has problems. I have never had a client that didn't have a bunch of problems. Sometimes they're bigger, sometimes they're smaller, but I find everything just comes and goes in different waves. So after you do that, write down all the good things in your life that are working out. Because sometimes we focus on our problems so much that it becomes the biggest thing in the room. So what else is happening? For this woman I was speaking about, her children are well. They weren't always well. She's well. She wasn't always well. Her work is good. She's working on a lot of creative projects. Her boyfriend is good. And I'm sure there are a lot of other things that are beautiful and wonderful in her life. But just that alone, her problems were not the biggest thing in the room. Did they matter? Yes, but other things matter too. So we have to be careful if we just give our attention to our problems, it's going to be hard to feel hopeful. If we just give our attention to our problems, we are ignoring the beauty in our lives. We are giving up that gorgeous, beautiful moment that we're in. We're giving up the enjoyment and we're so busy looking at what's wrong that we're not seeing what's right. And what's right is a resource for us. Sometimes it's a resource for us to feel love. 
and comforted. Sometimes it's a resource for us to be present and enjoy what's happening. And sometimes it's a resource to give us that perspective that we could look at our problems and know that they can change over time. And if they don't, we will still be okay. Most of the time, we let our problems overwhelm us because we believe if it doesn't work out the way I need it to be, I will not be okay. There are many ways to be okay. And that is a very important thing while you're moving through. So first, separate your problems. Next, write all the good things in your life. Allow them to bring you presence. Allow them to bring you joy. Allow it to be a perspective where you can create new things. Be creative about your problems and know there are many ways to be okay. And the next thing I always say is do the maybe practice. Why is that problem making you feel so defeated? Why is that problem taking breath from you? Why is that problem taking life from you? So with my friend with the lawsuit, her biggest fear was she was going to lose. And if she lost, she wasn't going to get paid. And if she didn't get paid, it would be a setback. But she's been without that money for a few years. It would be wonderful to get it. But she forgot if I don't get that money, I could still be okay. So for her, her biggest fear is she's not going to get paid. And then her maybe statements is maybe I'll win the case. But if I don't win, maybe I could still be okay. And for her, that's what she needed. It was making her not feel safe not to have that money. But then she realized, well, maybe I'll figure it out. Maybe I could take a loan. Maybe I could sell more product. I don't know what's going to happen. But I still have breath and I still have maybe. And with her lease, the minute she separated the problem out from the lawsuit, she realized, wait a second, it's just a space. There's nothing special about the space that I'm in. And the rental market's great. Maybe it's good I move. Or maybe I could look at other spaces and go back to the landlord. Maybe I could move home for a while. Maybe I could see if a friend is renting space and I could sublet. It was never a big problem. She was just lumping it in with the other problem and it looked so big. So the maybe is always really important because for some reason, when things don't go the way we expected, we forget the possibilities in life. We forget that because life is uncertain, it can resolve many ways. And the stress and the anxiety is just because we're afraid it's not going to work out, but we don't know that. Maybe it will. And even if it doesn't work out the way we had hoped, maybe something else will happen after that. I've had so many things in my life work out a certain way. And in the moment, you look at it and it's like, this is not good. But then over time, you see, well, you learn lessons, something else happened. And sometimes maybe I need to make the best of this. And life goes on and new opportunities and new possibilities. We are always growing. We are only limited when we believe that we are limited. We take rejections, we take things not working out and we believe, well, now life's not possible, but that's not true. It's just life pushing you in another direction. It's just life pushing you into another possibility. That's all it is. In the unknown really exists infinite possibilities, but we need to stay on the playing field and we need to keep availing ourselves to all that's possible. But to do that, you have to have a good perspective on your problems. And know that they have maybe and know that they're all not related and know everything works out one way or another. And then you have an opportunity again to try or to do something new. And you have so many gorgeous things in your life right now. If your problems take over your mind, you will be missing that. And like I always say, you create the future in this moment. And I know you have so many resources to do just that. Life is always changing. There are new opportunities always happening if we are open to receive them. Because for all you know, maybe the best is yet to come. Thank you for listening to this podcast today. If you'd like to get in touch with me, you can email me at allison at allisoncarmen.com. If you'd like to buy my book, The Gift of Maybe or A Year Without Men, they're available at all major bookstores and online retailers. And if you'd like to listen to the new audiobook for The Gift of Maybe, it's available on all major audio platforms. And if you like this podcast, I hope you subscribe and leave a comment.